All right, good morning everybody, Larry Higgins. We're back for day two with uh, Captain James Sanchez here in Corpus Christi. Had a great day yesterday. Stop very often, you know, we had 50 plus trout, some yep. redfish. Start off, weather was actually like ice perfect conditions. Yeah, couldn't ask for better than, yeah. <laughs> than, then, it, than it got real ugly later Yeah, on. wind kicked <laughs> up like it was forecasted to. Yep. <laughs> Gusting, I think 40 or close to it. Yep. And uh, we decided we won. We won a challenge, so we're coming out today. What's the forecast today, Jay? Yeah, uh, <laughs> the wind woke me up before my alarm this morning. I'll give you an idea about that. It's already blowing about like 28 to 30 miles an hour. We already have gusts up to 36, uh, and it's uh, barely 6:30 right now. So, yeah. other than uh, uh, Captain Chris Elliott, who's about to launch right now, we're yeah. pretty much going to have the water ourselves. Yeah, I'm the, I'm the. I was the first one here at Bluffs Landing uh, this morning, and uh, no one else is here besides Captain Chris Elliott who's going to join us today kind of a backup boat so um but uh yeah i mean we're gonna like i said yesterday was the uh the good yeah and kind of the bad in the afternoon that today is definitely gonna be the ugly i'll put it that way and uh it's it's gonna be a challenge no doubt but we're gonna be swinging for the fences today uh we're gonna be heading up north somewhere uh near port Aransas and uh try to get out of the uh out of the winds here you know and just do our best just do the best we can today there's fish up there now we've been finding them uh but and i'm hoping today they'll bite a little more consistently than they have been so uh, yeah, we'll just have to see how it goes. A little wing and a prayer doesn't help either. So, yeah. let's go get All right, guys. Well, we uh, went up north today to uh, try to get out of these winds, and uh, yeah, it didn't quite uh, meet our expectations. So, I've been fishing out here for a long time, you know, on the Texas coast, and I've never seen tides this low in April before. Uh, I got tracks on my GPS right now where the water uh, is gone. I mean, it's dry. Uh, and these south winds are literally just pushing this water out of here right now in a normally protected area. And uh, it's all stirred up, whatever, but what we're gonna be doing, we're gonna be working some color changes right now. We actually do have a lot of visible signs of nervous bait activity. And, and these, you know, pretty much these, these wind stirred potholes right now with these scattered grass beds in here. And uh, there's also a shallow grassland that we're gonna, you know, go throw uh, she dogs and also paddle tails in there. Try to make it work and hopefully get a fish or two. All right, so I caught the first redfish for the day so far. Nice, fat. Not a real long redfish, but it's five and a half pounds. Fought really well. Caught on the ball tail on a quarter ounce jig head. I'm just working it real hard, giving it real hard pops. Trying to displace and much, as much water as possible, make as much ruckus as possible basically underwater. I started off with a she dog, working it on top. That's a real loud top water. Didn't even sniff a bull up, so I switched his ball tail. Normally I wouldn't put a paddle tail on. Tommy and Austin are over there, just to the left of me. They both got paddle tails, hadn't had any bites yet, but I think we just got into the bait. So I'm gonna keep throwing this. We'll see what can, if we can get into any more of them. Let this one go. All right guys, so we're out here right now. Uh, Larry just caught a, about a, almost a six pound redfish. Uh, working these deeper potholes right here. So what happened at this flat uh, that we're at right now, is the water is completely drained off. Areas uh, on my GPS where I ran my boat through are completely dry right now. Uh, never seen that before. Kind of unprecedented, uh, you know, in all the years I've been fishing out here, especially in April. And, but the thing is though, is that these fish are holding in these wind surf puddles right now. So you see how shallow I am right now. I want you to watch me real quick. There's a puddle right in front of me. And what, you, what I want to show you is the elevation changes. Look, this right here is exactly what you look for regardless of how strong the wind is, okay? But especially on these windy days though, what's good about these is that these fish use these dirtier wind stirred potholes, okay, as cover. And as the wind driven currents pushing through here, it's dumping bait into these potholes and these fish are pretty much facing, like I talked about yesterday in our video, and they're ambushing bait. That's why we're seeing mullet. Every time you see mullet enter next to a grass, but they fall off, they skip out of there. Okay, and these fish are holding in here. And we're just dragging our soft plastics in there really slow, give them a chance to find them paddle tails and even a ball tail and like I said it's paying off already so oh yeah
25, 26 inch trout. That might be bigger than that. Just fell out. Look at that lure. Just fell out. Oh my god. Well, folks, I thought that was a big redfish. I was telling Jimmy in between these two grass beds, the water was funneling through there. Kept on seeing mullet. Kept on seeing mullet. She thumped the heck out of it. I honestly thought it was a big redfish at first. She stayed down. Yeah. Yeah, weighs about six pounds. <laughs> man, tough days, guys, but man, like I said, it pays off sometimes. This is one of those days. I don't care if I catch another fish the rest of the day. This makes up for it. 30 mile an hour winds, gusts up to 40 right now. Look at that, all right. As you can see, the one is bright right here. Either bright colors or dark colors right here on these, on these with the wind surf, or these dirty uh, dirty water conditions, excuse me. She got the heck out of it. That is a beautiful fish. I'm gonna release this trout right here. 27 and a quarter inches, weighs six pounds, gonna let her go. She spawned out, but she probably would have weighed about seven. Absolutely beautiful fish, look at that. And these guys are doubled up behind me. She's good. Just took off. These guys are doubled up behind me on redfish, it looks like. 30 mile an hour winds and it's paying off today, man. Yeah. It was gonna be tough, but they gonna look too easy right now. These guys are helping me out. like that though like a cormorant for example a lot of people I know they don't like cormorants but cormorants I actually use a lot during the winter time to find bait fish too because they're they feed on fish they're diving down the water so whenever I see cormorants in the air besides ospreys or even pelicans I'll uh I'll use those to help me find bait and stuff like that Tommy Trim the motor on the throttle. Trim it all the way down. On the throttle. There you go. Trim it down. All the way down. Okay, there we go. All right, stop. Right there.
you out. I didn't know. Oh, look, triple that. Triple that, look. Real, real, real. All right. I honestly didn't know what to expect today uh, with the way the forecast was, but they played out. Um, you know, we were fishing color changes along a windblown shoreline, lots of bait in there. I said I had a you know a good trout, about 27 and a quarter that I released, and then it was nothing but redfish. Look, we're all, oh, Larry just lost one over there. Um, and we got into the reds uh, big time. So we have probably about like 25, almost 30 reds right now. Uh, not a lot of big ones, but at this point we have about probably half of them that are keepers. Um, and we're just throwing these paddle tails right now. We tried top waters, but these fish wouldn't wouldn't touch a top water. Uh, so what we're doing right now, we're just throwing these paddle tails. Typical of what we've been catching today, about you know 21 to 22 inches. You know, considering the winds are blowing about 35 right now, gusting over 40, uh, we'll take it. You know, it's been a good day considering the conditions. And we're just slow rolling them, as you can see, along this little drop off right here. These these grass lines, these scattered potholes uh, over the sand. I said the tides are extremely low right now. These fish have nowhere else to go but the next HSN drop off or depth change. And they're here right now feeding like crazy. It's been a good day. So, quarter ounce uh, rig paddle tails, man, have been the ticket. Another little tip. You notice how we're on a line right here. Okay, we're catching fish right now. We're not moving. Okay, that's one of the biggest tips that I can uh, give to people, especially on days that are windy. You know, you, you have the, you know, you have the, you know, tendency to want to just go forward the wind, you know, as you get pushed forward. Don't do that though. If you catch fish, stop. Don't be a greyhound, especially when the fish are right in front of you. You're just push them out and scare them. These guys found out the hard way. They were on a good trout bite yesterday and they even did it today with some of the redfish. Even taking, you know, five to 10 steps like that and then your mud trail kicks off downwind like that will scare those fish off. So you get a bite or catch fish, stop. And back out here carefully. So it's end of day two, uh, as predicted, it was windy as all get out out there. Uh, Captain James had a solid plan this morning, but uh, we had a great day, caught a lot of fish, but uh, we had to adapt a little bit based off of conditions. No doubt about that, yeah. We uh, we started off this morning with winds that were about 23, 24 miles an hour. And uh, by the time we left, we had sustained winds that were near 35 miles an hour with gusts up to 41, 42. Uh, and out of the south too, that was uh, not predicted correctly by the weatherman. Uh, it's supposed to be out of the southeast, so that made for, you know, an interesting boat ride back, no doubt, but it also set us up for a, a prime scenario with these fish. Uh, like I mentioned early in the video with, you know, the lower tides, I mean, literally that south wind blew all the water out of this area that we were at, so the fish had only one area to go, and that was the next drop off that was nearby, and we found them. I mean, we had nearly, what, 30 redfish, yeah. And we had two trout, including the one I caught, which was 27 and a quarter inches. Uh, just a healthy female that spawned out. And yeah, just working these color changes and, you know, and, and these little depressions and off grass lines like that really, really paid off. And there's a lot of bait in there. Uh, and of course, you know, thanks to these guys uh, for sticking it out. Most people don't fish on days like today. I mean, I'll fully admit I am mentally exhausted right now. And I, I'm, I'm exhausted right now for the past two days, but especially mentally. Um, and a little advice for those that, you know, want to go fishing these conditions, have a solid game plan. Okay, yes, you got to go learn, you can't get better by not going out there, but you got to have a solid, solid game plan. If you're the captain of your boat like that, you have to make sure that safety is the number one priority for you and your crew and get them back to the dock, uh, you know, in, a, in one piece. So, especially, that, especially with the low tides, uh, yeah, super exactly. high winds and low tides, yep. and, uh, it, it can get ugly out there. Yeah, it revealed a lot of uh, structures that I yeah. thought were there, but well, we're the first, confirmed we're definitely there. Yeah, the first spot we were going to go to yeah. was dry. It yep. was basically, it was dry. Basically dry. That's why when I talk about adapting, you know, we got there. James really couldn't believe it was that dry. Yeah, I was shocked. And Never but seen he before. just he made a, a decision right there. We made a little little adjustment, yep. moved, shifted over a little bit, saw the bait there, mm -hmm. and commenced to catch them. Exactly. Windblown shorelines, guys. I mean, you know. Let you use use Mother Nature to your advantage with her conditions. You know what I mean. Let that bait get pushed towards those fish along the shoreline. They have nowhere else to go to, and those fish were stacked up right along those potholes that we found. And, and man, it proved yeah. really good. No surprise, this windy 
the, the best bite we got was on a four inch paddle tail. Yep, on a quarter ounce chicken. Yeah, that thing puts out, the reason we throw the quarter ounce is that bait wants to float in these high winds. It doesn't want to get down. Yep. The quarter ounce helps it get down, plus you can chunk it a mile. Mm -hmm. But that, the vibration out of that paddle tail, just, it puts out so much vibration, those fish key in on it. Caught a couple on a ball tail, just playing around. No luck with the top waters today. Oh yeah. But uh, it was a great day. It, it's exhausting. Oh yeah. There's times when that gust hit, it wants to slam your rod down. It's, it's gusting that hard. But uh, no, we had a great time. Uh, hopefully y'all got some good tips out of this video. Captain James is wealth of knowledge out there. Good at explaining things. But uh, hopefully, hopefully the next trip's a little calmer. Right? Oh yeah, I hope so too. Yeah, yeah. 10 to 20 is more favorable at this point, so. <laughs> Anyways, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and uh, man, I hope you guys learned some uh, some new tips for you guys when you're on the water next time. Yeah. Do you have any questions about anything that you saw in the video or fishing this this stretch of Texas? Get hold of Captain James here. Uh, he's a wealth of knowledge. I'm sure he'd be happy to talk to you about it. All right.